Here is the full protocol to reverse the signs of skin aging based on the latest science. Plus there's an important correction about retinoid creams that I address at the end of the video. And to reiterate, this is not for vanity reasons. How our skin looks reflects our chances of living a long life. And if we see a young person in the mirror, we're far more likely to identify as a young person and practice those healthy life habits. I've structured these strategies to follow a typical daily routine. So after a shower, the first strategy to use is a moisturizer with two critical ingredients. We need to select a moisturizer that's got ceramides in it. Ceramides are essentially the glue that holds our skin cells together and helps keep our skin barrier intact and healthy. In 2019, a split-side, double-blind, randomized controlled trial was done of 24 individuals. After 28 days, they found a statistically significant decrease in wrinkle numbers and improvements in texture on the ceramide-treated side. The second ingredient we need is nicotinamide or vitamin B3. It helps to improve the skin barrier function by decreasing water loss through the outer layer of the skin. It also improves complexion by improving pigmentation, blotchiness and redness of aging skin. Which is why there's a slightly higher dose of vitamin B3 in microvitamin, which is the multivitamin and mineral that I designed and personally use. And the moisturizer that ticks all of those boxes that I use is CeraVive Afternoon Facial Moisturizing Lotion, and this created a bit of confusion in my previous video. And I use the afternoon moisturizer in the morning because it doesn't have sunscreen, it only has the ceramides and the nicotinamide, whereas the morning versions have got sunscreen, which brings me to the second out of the eight strategies. It's crucial to pick a sunscreen with a certain ingredient in it, but before I get to that, there's a striking example of the powerful effects of sunscreen where this 92 year old used sunscreen on her face but not her neck. And the only pushback against sunscreens is safety which we'll cover shortly. A massive study published in 2013 involving 903 adults were randomized to either use sunscreen or not. They found that the group who were using the sunscreen daily had no detectable increases in skin aging after four and a half years. They effectively stopped their skin from aging just by using sunscreen. And a follow-up 2016 paper showed reversal of some of the signs of skin aging, again just by using sunscreen. But there are concerns about sunscreen ingredients, so broadly speaking the sunscreen ingredients are divided into mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. And while chemical sunscreens offer better protection against the sun's UV radiation, they're easier to apply and are water resistant, most chemical sunscreen ingredients that are absorbed through the skin. This has led to concerns that those ingredients can disrupt hormone levels. These concerns were based on single cell and mice studies where large quantities of these ingredients were given, and yes they could see that it was disrupting hormone levels and responses. However, the human studies have been reassuring with no evidence of harm. This is because only a minute amount is absorbed through the skin. And is why the American Academy of Dermatology states that the science doesn't show that sunscreen ingredients currently available in the US are harmful to human health. Nevertheless, some people will elect to use mineral sunscreen ingredients, such as zinc oxide, because while it doesn't offer as good a protection against the sun's UV radiation, it's not absorbed through the skin. But we do have a chemical sunscreen ingredient called bemetrezinol, which offers fantastic UV protection, but it's a large molecule. It doesn't get absorbed through the skin, so it's the best of both worlds. The downside is that even though it's been used since the 1990s in Europe and Australasia, it's not currently FDA approved. But there's no other sunscreen ingredient on the planet that's been tested as much as bemetrezinol, and it's hoped that bemetrezinol will be approved by mid-2024. So the sunscreen that I apply after using the moisturizer is this one from La Roche Posay because it contains bemetrezinol. And bemetrezinol is sometimes listed as its chemical ingredient which I'll leave on the screen now. If you're living in the US, there are ways to get bemetrezinol sunscreens if you go looking, but that's all I can say on the matter. And given that we're using sunscreen every day, it's advisable to take a thousand international units of vitamin D3, which is also found in microvitamin. The third out of the eight strategies is diet, and we'll address the correction that I need to make at the end of the video. While no one diet will be perfect for everyone, the current guidelines suggest a Mediterranean style diet rich in plant-based foods featuring plentiful fresh fruit and vegetables, herbs, nuts, beans and whole grains, with moderate amounts of seafood, dairy, poultry and eggs, and occasional red meat because this type of diet is associated with good skin health. 
I can't overemphasize how crucial diet is for our skin health. And again, I want to emphasize that no one diet will be perfect for everyone. However, there are some fundamentals. We want a high lean protein diet with lots of fiber and plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables. We also want to substitute saturated fats with unsaturated fats, such as extra virgin olive oil, walnuts, almonds, and avocados. So after having breakfast, the fourth out of the eight skincare strategies is collagen peptide supplements. We know from multiple randomized controlled trials such as this one, that collagen peptide supplements reduce skin wrinkles by about 8%. Collagen peptide supplements have taken the long ropes of collagen and chopped them up into shorter chains of amino acids to help with absorption. So critics of collagen peptide supplements will say that all we're doing is providing the body with amino acids and you can get amino acids from proteins. So if you're having enough protein in your diet, collagen peptide supplements won't offer any benefits. Here's the problem though, we've got specific peptide transporters, so we can absorb these peptides and it does reach our skin. This is explained beautifully in a 2023 systematic review looking at collagen peptide supplements on skin health. It combined 26 randomized controlled trials involving 1,721 patients. It goes on to explain that yes, humans do absorb these peptides and it does reach the skin. It's not surprising then that when these studies were combined, we do see significant improvements on skin hydration and skin elasticity. Plus, to drive this point home, a study was done in 2020 that looked at collagen peptide supplements and compared it to protein supplements to see what effect there would be on wound healing. They found that the wound healing rate was significantly higher following collagen peptide supplements compared to protein. So in the morning, I take between 10 to 15 grams of hydrolyzed collagen every day. The next supplement is hyaluronic acid, so the supplement, not the skin cream. A 75-year-old person only has about one quarter of the hyaluronic acid in their skin compared to a 19-year-old person, so we want to restore these levels, and we've got fantastic evidence from randomized controlled trials showing that if we supplement with hyaluronic acid, we reduce skin wrinkles by about 18%. And that trial had no conflicts of interest to declare it was not sponsored by a supplement company. And we've got many of these randomized controlled trials, again showing the same effect. The only concern on social media with hyaluronic acid supplements is a possibility that it may enhance cancer growth. But a 2014 trial that gave hyaluronic acid supplements to mice that already had cancer found that cancer growth was not altered by hyaluronic acid supplements. Now, hyaluronic acid supplements come in different molecular weights, but it appears that our intestinal bacteria break down the hyaluronic acid into low molecular weight to improve absorption. And microvitamin has 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid. So a typical morning routine after having a shower is to apply the moisturizer, then wait a couple of minutes and then apply the sunscreen. And remember, you want to have bimetrezinol in your sunscreen. Have breakfast, then take the collagen peptide supplements and then take a supplement that contains hyaluronic acid, such as microvitamin. The sixth out of the eight strategy to use is exercise. A really interesting paper came out this year comparing resistance exercise to aerobic exercise and what effects that has on skin health. It was a 16-week randomized controlled study of 61 healthy middle-aged women. What they found is that while both types of exercise improved skin elasticity and upper dermal structure, it was only the resistance exercise that improved the dermal thickness, and you can see that quite clearly on the graph here. It emphasizes the point that in addition to aerobic exercise for cardiovascular health, it's crucial to do resistance exercise. We need to lift weights. It also emphasizes that our health on the inside gets reflected to our skin on the outside. Strategy seven and eight are the night creams, and here is where I need to make a correction based on my last video. The first cream to use is a retinoid cream. Retinoids stimulate our skin building cells and also improve the blood supply to our skin. We know from multiple randomized controlled trials such as this one that we do see significant improvements in skin wrinkles when using retinoid creams. But you need to be careful when you start using these creams. It can irritate the skin, so it's crucial to only use it every second or third night and to use it at night, and you must wear sunscreen in the morning. There are two main types. We've got adapalene and tretinoin. Both appear to work equally well, but the adapalene is less irritating to the skin. Personally, I use tretinoin because that's the one that's available in New Zealand at the strength that I want. 
and I'll explain the final night cream before going through the correction. So lactic acid and glycolic acid, they are exfoliant ingredients, and the guidelines note that when used over the long term, these acids, they do affect the deeper layers of the skin. They help collagen and elastin regenerate, making fine lines less obvious. The exfoliants that I use are from Paula's Choice, and these exfoliants are designed to be applied at night and left overnight. But here's the correction. In my previous video, I said that I'd be using those creams and mix them with the retinoid creams, but I should have explained that in far more detail. Like I mentioned earlier, when you start using retinoid creams, you should only use them every second or third night to allow your skin to get used to them. But for some people, they can only use those creams about once or twice a week. But for me, I've been using retinoid creams for years and I don't have any hypersensitivity. Now that I've introduced the exfoliants though, I'll be using the exfoliants on Mondays and Thursdays and replace my retinoid creams on those nights. And as my skin gets used to the exfoliants, then I may start adding in small amounts of the retinoid creams on Mondays and Thursdays as well, but I'm going to take it very slow. So please don't go full Monty and mixing all of these creams at night when you're first starting out. They are very powerful. And remember, our health on the inside gets reflected to our skin on the outside. So make sure to check out this next video here on the relationship between cholesterol levels and brain health.